Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa, and I want to welcome you to this hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. Um, this is going to be a reading class, so if you are interested in practicing your reading out loud and also learning some new vocabulary, some new grammatical structures, things like that, um, then please join me. If you have a reservation for this class, you can use your reservation in the first uh, two minutes of each class. If you don't come during that time, then the regular join class button will be available to everybody. So if you are a Verbling com member and you haven't made a reservation but you want to join a class you just come to class and see if it's not full you know full means nine students plus the teacher um, if it's not full then you can always join at any time um, hi guys hi there Yuki welcome to class hi Yuki hi yeah good to see you hi Vincenzo how are you hi teacher how are you hi. good I'm good Thank you. Hi, Peter. Yeah. Hello. Good. How are, how are you? you? Fine. Thanks. Okay. Wonderful. And uh, Maria, how are you doing? Hi. I'm doing fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not so busy this weekend. Uh, actually, I've been pretty relaxed this weekend. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Does Sweden celebrate Valentine's Day? Uh, not that much. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course we do. But On the same I always, day? I can we... imagine it's bigger in the United States. I don't know why, but we call it um, Kära Hjärtans Dag. <laughs> really? <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I can write it down for you, <laughs> but it's pretty hard to. to what is it? On. What does it mean? Does it mean? Uh, it means, uh, um, I don't know, dear hearts day or something like that. Okay. Hearts, you know, hearts, um, precious hearts, something like precious, that. Precious, precious hearts day. I like that. Yeah, something I I can't <laughs> translate it, but it's not it's, it's not called Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Precious Hearts Day. I like that. Or uh, All Hearts Day or something. All Hearts Day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but is it on the same day? Like, because it was yesterday here. For us. Yeah, it was 14th. Okay. So it was uh, yesterday here as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's Saturday. Right. Yeah. You're Saturday night right now. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's confusing. It is sometimes. I know. I know. Especially uh, sometimes I work with like private students who are like in Romania or something and wow. it's I have to work at night because it's early morning so I always have to remember what day are we talking about because it's two yeah. different days then. <laughs> Not the same yeah. day. <laughs> oh, thank you, Norel. <laughs> My crazy hair. My crazy hair. They look very cute. Thank you. Well, I, have, I have this skylight back there. You can see that the lights coming coming behind me. My hair is a very interesting kind of hair because it's uh, curly. Cur it's curly, I but, love, it, yes. but it's frizzy also. So it's not something you can comb. It's like sheep's hair. You know, <laughs> it's like wool. Oh, no, they are sheep. so beautiful. <laughs> So, I sometimes. always wanted curls sometimes. when I was little. I oh, yeah? Yeah. Your hair straight? And my hair is pretty straight, yeah. Not, and I wanted straight hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems so much easier. And you can curl it. You can curl it if you want yeah, to. Yeah, of course. I, yeah, but you can straighten it. <laughs> yeah, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work to curl hair, too. <laughs> yes. Guys don't have to worry about it. Vincenzo, you don't have to worry about it too much. <laughs> All this hair. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Guys, have so Guys have it easy. Guys have it easy sometimes. Yeah, just you know, get a buzz cut or something and you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi Aida, how are you doing? Hey, Aida, did you fun. did your kids go see the Lego movie yet? <laughs> 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 right now they are interested to watch the Olympics. Oh, the Olympics! Oh, fun! 
Nice. Yeah, that's fun. I haven't seen any of the Olympics. Uh, I don't have a TV. Really? Yeah, I don't have a TV. At my, well, I do have a TV at my house, but I don't have, like, cable TV. I just have Apple TV, and so I can watch movies and stuff on it, but um, I would have to go to this other house <laughs> to go watch uh, the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see. It's very strange than in my country. In my country, if I have TV, yeah. I can pick a channel, but here I have to get a, a cable, cable to watch you have whatever to pay. the channel is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange. When I was a kid growing up, we just had TV and you just turn it on, and then there's channels. Only maybe four or five. But nowadays, if you have a TV and you turn it on, you have to have some kind of hookup to a cable or a satellite or something to get TV. Yeah, so. lot, lot of yeah it's different. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, did you see you got the link? So this, let me explain a little bit what we're going to read so you have a little bit of a background. Um, I actually went and saw this movie. The other day, it's the new movie with George Clooney, um, who's a popular American actor, uh, who Nihon loves, but she's not here today. <laughs> Maybe she's going out with her boyfriend. <laughs> we'll have to mm -hmm. ask her. Um, <clears throat> so the movie is kind of an interesting story. It was based on a true story, actually. And it's a simple story, really. It was... Um, just about the fact that, uh, as you can see here in the title, it talks about Nazi looted art. So to loot means to steal. So I guess what was happening was during World War II, uh, Hitler decided that he was going to um, take all of the works of art out of Europe, the different cities in Europe that he was trying to conquer, and he was looting the art. So he was taking, stealing the art, and he was um, going to create some type of Führer, you know, like leader or something, museum, where he would put it all in there, and, and like he would be the owner of all of this um, art, you know, all this artwork from the the past, you know, years and years, hundreds of years before, you know, Europe obviously has a very rich history of art in different time periods and different ways of doing art, sculptures, all that, you know, Impressionism, all these different movements in art. And so what happened was uh, some American guy realized what was happening and told the president of the United States at the time, uh, Roosevelt, that they needed to go and save the art. And it was kind of an interesting thing because most people were not thinking about saving art. They were thinking about saving people's lives uh, because they were trying to stop the war um, from happening and pe you know, people were being devastated, their towns were being destroyed, and so people were not thinking about art so much, but this some people were, of course, um, and so they got together this group of guys who that was their mission. So different people from the United States, France, and England, I think, who knew about art, so they knew what to look for. They went and tried to um, find out where the art was and get it back. So that was like their mission, and the and the story of the movie is that story. So George Clooney along with somebody else, uh, wrote the movie and then, of course, starred in it and directed it. So that's what the movie is about, and it's pretty good. It doesn't get the highest ratings like on IMDb, but I thought it was a good, something fun to watch, an interesting piece of World War II history that I didn't know about, and um, so it's another part of that time period. Okay. So, we'll start reading. The Monuments Men Did More Than Rescue Nazi Looted Art. So this is from Christopher Knight, who is the Los Angeles Times art critic. The greatest Rubens altarpiece in America is in Ohio at the Toledo Museum of Art. We have the Monuments Men to thank for that. George Clooney's glumphing all-star movie, The Monuments Men, did not impress the critics. Inert, lamented L.A. Times movie critic Kenneth Turan. 
But the real life story of soldiers sent to protect and rescue Europe's great artworks during and after World War II is impressive. Okay. Aida, why don't we start with you? You can read for us. The greatest, no, from the title? Uh, the monument. Ahead. Yeah, whatever. Start from the title skin. <laughs> the monuments men did more than rescue Nazi looted art. The greatest Arabian altarpiece in America is in Ohio at the Toledo Museum of Art. We have the monument, monuments, right? Monuments. Monuments. Mm -hmm. Monument men mm -hmm. to thank for that. George Clooney's glamping author movie, The Monument Men. I'm sorry, the screen disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, The Monument Men did not impress the critics. Ennard lamented LA Times movie critic Kent Torian, but the real life story of soldiers sent to protect and rescue Europe's great artworks during and after World War II is impressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me make sure you guys all know what monuments, it's kind of, this was their code name, like the group, you know, so in wartime I guess different bands of soldiers or whatever, they, get, they give themselves uh, secret codes or names or things. So these guys were called the Monuments Men, and a monument is like a piece of art. You know, it's like, it's usually like a building, maybe, um, but it's a piece of art and it's something to remember. So that kind of represented what they were trying to do. They were trying to rescue the various monuments or pieces of art or protect different, uh, a lot of the art was in uh, churches, for example, around uh, different cities in France and um, Italy and other places they were trying to save. Um, so that's why it's called the Monuments Men. All right, so the altar piece, this is an altar piece, so an altar is usually in a church, so the altar is where you go to worship, it's usually the piece like that's behind where the priest or something, you know, like in a Catholic church, the priest is talking. Uh, the altar piece is that piece. And here's the piece that they're talking about right here. This is a large painting uh, that was from the 1600s. So you remember like, you know, World War II is happening in 1930s, 40s. And so he was taking all these pieces of art. The Well, Hitler, uh, the German army was taking all of these different pieces of art, but they were hundreds of years old and they were important for various reasons, you know, um, in terms of history, historical value. Galumphing is a funny word. It just means it's kind of uh, silly. It's kind of uh, awkward. So it's it's talking about George Clooney's, it's kind of an awkward all-star movie. So it, it wasn't really, um, it wasn't, the critics didn't really like it. They didn't say like, oh, this is amazing or something. It's kind of a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say goofy. I didn't think it was goofy, but galumphing the word means kind of like it wasn't It wasn't really well done. It was kind of awkward a little bit. Um, but it was an all-star movie. So whenever you see those words all-star whatever, all-star cast, all-star movie, all-star team, it means that they all the guys who were playing the major roles, they're movie stars. So it had George Clooney. It had uh, French actor uh, Jean Dujardin who had won an Oscar before. John Goodman, so people that at least um, American moviegoers and people you know who like movies around the world probably would recognize uh, the characters. Bill Murray was in it, so a lot of them were you know pretty famous uh, actors who played the parts of these soldiers. Um, inert means it was like it didn't have much action; it just wasn't going anywhere. So it, it really was a simple story. So there wasn't a lot of action. But it wasn't like an action World War II movie, and it wasn't uh, a one that was talking too much philosophically about, you know, the problems that World War II uh, created for the world. But um, and lamented. So when you lament something, it means you're kind of sad about it. So I think maybe some of the critics thought it would be better. They wanted it to be maybe 
tell a different story or something. So they lamented. Whenever you lament something, it means you're sad, sad about it. But the author who's writing this article said, even though the movie wasn't, you know, critically impressive or the critics didn't really like it, they were not impressed. The, the actual story, the real life story is impressive. So it is interesting. It is amazing. Yeah. So, and so then next is, so was its aftermath. The spotlight that the movie has trained on wartime events also reminded me of an important, if unintended, consequence of the work done by Americans among the Monuments Men. And I hasten to add a smaller but nonetheless critical group of Monuments Women. Okay, Maria? Yes, so was the after, after, aftermath, <laughs> the spotlight that the movie has trained on wartime events also reminded me of an important, if unintended, consequence of the work done by Americans among the monument, monuments men and I hasten to add a smaller but nonetheless critical group of monuments women mm -hmm. so the aftermath so the aftermath is something that takes place after so the aftermath of war um, you know means that there's lots of stuff that's destroyed uh, but the aftermath of is what uh, the author is talking about is what happened after these uh, monuments men found uh, the works of art, what they did with them. So um, that is important, you know, what happened afterward. So there, the spotlight, I think you guys probably all know, the movie was sh um, uh, having the spotlight on these wartime events. It means it just, you know, showed you them. You put something in the spotlight, it means you shine a light on it so that everybody sees it. It's in the, the limelight or the spotlight, we say, and rather than like behind the scenes or not known. Um, and let's see. Also reminded Sorry. me of an important... Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Uh, the meaning of train. Trained, yeah. The in spotlight this, that the movie has trained on wartime events. It means trained here is a funny word, choice of words that the author used, but it just means what it showed. So the spotlight that the movie has trained on. I would say that the spotlight that the movie uh, focused on, you know, something that, yeah, yeah, focused, yeah, okay. mm -hmm. yeah, and so it reminded him. So remember, this author of this article, he's an art critic, so he understands art and knows what has been happening. Um, it reminded him of an important, if unintended, consequence. So an unintended consequence is something. A consequence is what happens because of an action, but if it's unintended, it means you did not expect it to happen. So it wasn't something that you expected. Um, and so he says, I hasten to add a smaller but nonetheless critical group. So he wanted to mention that, you know, there were, this was good for um, the United States in terms of getting the art back. That's what he's really going to talk about here. Um, and he wants to tell us that even though the women weren't really mentioned in this movie at all, uh, they did play a critical role. And there was, it was a small, but a critical role. There was only one woman in this movie. She was an art uh, curator um, in, from France, and she was played by the actress Kate Blanchett, but she was very helpful in helping the uh, Americans find the art. She was really, really important. Um, so that you see that in the movie. So instrumental in saving threatened works of art and returning looted masterpieces to their rightful European owners, whether private individuals or public museums, they also used what they learned as art historian soldiers in Europe to enrich the collections of America's art museums. Okay, Narelle. Instrumental in saving threatened works of art and returning looted masterpieces to their rightful European owners, whether private individuals or public museums, they also used what they learned as art historian soldiers in Europe to enrich the collections of American art museums. Mm -hmm. Good. So, I uh, um, they're saying, 
so it's kind of broken up here a little bit because of the way I broke it up so everybody has something to read. But instrumental in saving. So the, in the aftermath, what was important about this group is that even though they were instrumental in, that means they were important. To be instrumental in something means you are important, you're significant, you made a difference. So they were very instrumental in saving these threatened works of art. Because what was why they were threatened is because in the movie anyways it shows that as the war was ending um, some of the German soldiers were burning these works of art they like had thousands and thousands, millions of pieces of art really and um, some as they knew that they were going to be surrendering they started to destroy some of the art so it was threatened meaning it was going to probably be uh, destroyed so they were saving saving it. And they were returning looted, again, it means stolen, um, masterpieces to their rightful European owners. So the rightful word there means it belongs to them. So what was happening was uh, the, the Nazi Germans were going in, and of course, uh, whenever they would go into a city, they would take the art from like any of the... Uh, the prisoners, like the Jewish people who owned art, some of these people were wealthy art collectors. They would, of course, take them to the prisons or whatever, and then they would take stuff from their houses, and especially the art. And then in the movie, you also see that they would go into churches, Catholic churches in different parts of France, for example, and take some of the very well-known uh, pieces of art that were, like, uh, from, well, there was a, statue from Michelangelo and there was other paintings and things that were very popular and famous and they were taking those so they were returning them whether it was to private individuals so just families and people to collectors or to uh, public museums throughout Europe and so what what also what was happening for these guys these Americans is that they they learned a lot so they learned a lot about art history while they were trying to save as much of the art as they could and this has helped to enrich the collections of America's art museum so to enrich means make it better so because they gained a lot of knowledge about European art history and the collections that were there they were able to come back later and over the years help American museums acquire some good pieces so that their collections would be nice and representative of uh, European art. Monuments, Sorry. yes? Uh, uh, could you tell me, uh, they also used what they learned as art of history. Uh, they, they, what do they indicate here? They? They is the monuments men. Monument to men. Ah. Yeah. So the they are many. They are soldiers. There was like a group of seven or so guys. In the movie, it shows seven guys. Ah, seven guys. Yeah, and they were um, art historians. One guy was like an architect. Some of them were um, art curators, and they were from England and France and the United States. So they knew about art. And they were also sold. They became soldiers, and their mission was to go and find out where the Germans had taken all of this stolen art. So George and, Clooney is one of them. Yes. Ah, I see. Thank yes, you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they. So in real life, he's saying, in real, George Clooney was just the actor, but in the real life, the real story, the soldiers, once the war was over, they came back. And they had a lot of information now and knowledge about um, the different pieces of art. And so they were able to know which ones were important so that later, um, working at American museums, they could buy those pieces from other places around the world. Monuments men, so those guys, those soldiers, returned to become curators and directors of museums in Baltimore, Boston, Buffalo, New York, Minneapolis, New Haven, Connecticut, Newark, uh, sorry, New York, Worcester, Massachusetts, and many more cities, including Toledo. They brought their knowledge with them. Okay, Peter. 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 <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I'm lost. From Monuments Men returned. Okay. Monuments Men returned to become curators and directors of museums in Baltimore, Boston, Buffalo, New York, Minneapolis, New Haven, Connecticut, New York, Worcester, Massachusetts, and many more cities, including Toledo. They brought their men, they brought their new knowledge with them. Mm -hmm. So, after the war ended, in the movie, two of the guys, well, I don't want to give it away, but, <laughs> but you, if you want to see it, there's action, it's a wartime movie, so things happen, but they came home and they came back to the United States, and some of them became curators, so a curator in a museum is the person who decides like what they should buy, what the collection should look like, what the shows should look like. So that's just a, ter a technical term for that type of job. And then it just lists a bunch of important cities in the United States that have museums. And so they learned a lot. So they brought their new knowledge, the knowledge that they had gained uh, in Europe, back with them. And that has helped. Um, Can I he ask a short Sure. Question? Yeah, definitely. I think that sentence is a little bit funny because either Connecticut or Massachusetts are cities. Well, no. What happened was is what they're saying is uh, they're saying some cities, so Baltimore and Boston, and then I don't know why, but they say Buffalo, New York, and I didn't um, I didn't write out New York, but I did with the other ones. <laughs> so New York, so that's. Uh, city, state, of course, and then Minneapolis, New Haven, Connecticut. So they're saying, they're giving us the state because some of these cities aren't as well known. Does that make okay, sense? Okay, so they mean New Haven in Connecticut. Yes, and exactly. New York in or, no. Work, yeah, I work don't know why in New Massachusetts. York yeah. New York is not in Massachusetts. I don't there know. Might, there might be another New York in there, in Massachusetts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's why it was kind of confusing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because some of these cities are well known, like Boston is well known. Yeah. But Buffalo, yeah. people might not know where, where that actually is. <laughs> okay. So they yeah. have to explain. So exactly. Okay, <laughs> yeah. They're trying to, anyways. Okay. Peter Paul Rubin's life size The Mystic Marriage of St. Catherine, 1633, is a stellar example of the impact of the monuments men on collections. The visionary masterpiece shows the Christ child seated in the lap of the enthroned Virgin Mary, crowning martyred Catherine of Alexandria in a symbolic act of divine matrimony. Rubens' sumptuous palette and explosive brushwork propel the celestial event into realms of ecstatic delirium. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of flowery language. Okay, who's next? Vincenzo, you get to read that one. But unmute your microphone. There you go. Hold on. Yeah. Marriage of Saint Catherine in 1630. No, Peter Paul Rubens, life size, the myth marriage of Saint Catherine in 1633 is a stellar example of the of the monuments man on collections. The visionary masterpiece shows the Christ child sitting in the lap of the enthroned Virgin Mary, crowning martyred Catherine of Alexandria in a symbolic act of divine matrimony. Rubens's sumptuous palette and explosive ashwar propelled the celestial event into realms of ecstatic delirium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'll go through some of the vocabulary. Remember, this is uh, the piece that he's describing right here. So the yeah. life size means it's tall. It's really big. It's not a small painting. It's really huge. Life size would mean it's maybe those people in that uh, uh, painting are regular life size. So it's a really large, big painting. Um, it's a stellar example. Stellar means like shining. It's a wonderful, yeah. shining example of the impact. So the impact means these guys, the Monuments Men, they have made an impact because what they did was save this piece of art from being destroyed. And so therefore it has helped, uh, you know, the collections in Europe and also in the United States. So that when you have an impact on something, it means what you did made a difference. 
So they had, you know, it, it made a difference in, during this time period and for the future. Okay, so it shows the Christ child seated in the lap of, so here we see the Christ child, the baby, um, and she's enthroned. So enthroned means you're sitting on the throne like a king or a queen has a throne. It's the chair, you know, the nice big chair that you sit in. That's your throne. And so you're enthroned there. And what she's doing is crowning uh, this lady, Cal Catherine. So the, or she's not doing it. Crowning, the baby, yes. Je baby Jesus is doing it. <laughs> the Christ doing child. Doing the crown. Yes. Yeah. He's taking the crown. Yeah, so she's just, um, this guy is just describing what we see. And this is a mm -hmm. symbolic act of divine matrimony. So uh, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a very religious kind of uh, painting. Yeah. Divine means, you know, uh, from God, intervention kind of thing. And sumptuous yeah. palette describes the colors. So you can see the colors are very um, sumptuous. Usually we use that when we're talking about food and it's really yummy. You know, so you can describe the palette. The colors are very kind of nice and yummy. They're they're like the dark red, the dark blue, yeah. the gold, that kind of stuff. It's very colorful. And explosive brushwork. The brushwork is how he used the paint, paint brush. So how he yeah. used that. And then this whole thing <laughs> propelled the celestial event. So celestial refers to the heavenly. This heavenly event. It just makes it feel very. Um, ecstatic. Delirium is like crazy. You're so in awe. You're just like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it's what's. Kind of, yeah. You have the angels up here. You know yeah. this kind of thing. Also, the light. The light is very important. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. The lighting. The the way lighting, that it's. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know a lot about how to, you know, be critical of art or whatever, but that's how this person is describing. And there's yeah. a lot in there. The painting was bought. Yes, Aida? Can you go back a little bit, please, about uh, the divine mat divine matrimony? What do you mean by this? The divine... Okay, so do you know, understand the word divine? Yes. Okay, so it's from... So the Christ child is giving... So usually matrimony is like the joining of uh, yes, yes. two women, like marriage, right? Man... And the woman, but here I think it's I don't know what the um, I don't know Perhaps the context of it, so I don't know what if she's getting married or something. <laughs> but no, it's, it's more like the divine matrimony between her and and God. I think does that make sense? Yes, yes, it's the the choose of the God of no. In this sense, yeah. you use God with with Catherine. Oh, I thought it was yeah. maternal sort. Ma no, not the matrimony, but it's a kind of uh, choose of the God of matrimony. Right. Of the mother Mary. It's not about the mother at all. No, no, mm. I don't think so. It's not kind of okay. Yeah, it's it's like um, Catherine is being um, coming together with God, kind of thing. Not necessarily in a real yes. matrimony, in a divine one. So like right. nuns, you know, they're in divine matrimony with God. Mm. Yeah. So it's not like a yes. real marriage. <laughs> it's more like you're committed yes. to this <laughs> union of you and God together. I see. Yeah, he also so writes symbolic. Symbolic. Yeah, it's symbolic. Uh, right. The union, the union yes. of spirit. The union is yes. spirit. Is exactly. Spirit. 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 Spiritual union. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A lot of these, um, you know, types of art were based on stories, maybe stories from biblical times, you know, and so sometimes they depict various scenes. So I don't personally know this scene. I don't know what she was martyred for, you know, like I don't, usually when you're a martyr it means you've done something, you've sacrificed something. So Catherine of Alexandria, I don't know historically what her uh, importance is. But that's usually what the paintings are about, some kind of historical story, whether it's true or not true. I don't know. <laughs> the painting was bought for Toledo in 1950. Harvard-trained art historian Otto Whitman, Jr., 1911 to 2001, associate director and later director of the Ohio Museum, had been in charge of the Office of Strategic Services in Washington near the end of the war. In that capacity, he traveled often 
to Europe to interview museum officials, art dealers, and collectors, and to investigate Nazi looted art. Okay, Yuki. Okay. Just a minute. Sorry. The painting was bought for Tolendo in 1950. How about? Harvard trained art, art historian Otto Whitman Jr., 1911 to, to 2001, associate director and le later director of Ohio Muse Museum, had been in charge of, of the Office of Strate Strategic Services in Washington near the end of the end of the year war. In that capacity, he traveled often often to Europe to interview museum officials, art dealers, and collectors, and to investigate Nazi rooted art. Mm -hmm. Good. So he was Harvard trained. That means he was trained at Harvard University uh, about art. Um, when he was in charge of, that means he was like the head of, It was he was the boss, basically, of that office, Office of Strategic Services. Um, in that capacity, so in that job or in that role, we could say, because of that um, position that he had, he traveled to Europe a lot and he was meeting with all of these different <clears throat> museum officials, the art dealers, the art dealers are the ones who buy and sell art, and the collectors, those are the ones who buy art or collect it, and um, he was investigating you know, the Nazi looted art. So he was trying to find out where the yeah. art was now, what it was, what the importance, where did it come from, that kind of stuff. So he was learning, and so that's allowed him to understand what was going on with all of this art. The Rubens, so that painting, had been stolen by Hermann Goering, who oversaw much of the Nazi art plunder from the great Berlin collection assembled by Jewish banker and industrialist Leopold Koppel. It passed through the Munich collecting point for confiscated art, a site that Whitman visited many times. Okay, Aida. <clears throat> the Rubens had been stolen by Hermann Gordian, who oversaw much of the Nazi art plunder from the great Berlin collection assembled by Joris Penker and industrialist mm -hmm. Wout Fabel, it passed through the Munch collection point for confiscated art, a site that Whitman visited many times. Mm -hmm. So he, um, this guy Hermann Goering, he's a German uh, Nazi soldier. <clears throat> uh, maybe he had it was a general or something. I don't know who he was, but um, he oversaw. So that's from the verb to oversee. So if you are overseeing something, it means you are in charge. So he was the person who was, you know, knowing what they were doing with the art. So he was giving directions. That's what you do when you oversee like a team or a company or you know a bunch of people workers or something so in this case he was um, knowing what the soldiers were doing when they found the art <clears throat> he was probably telling them what to do in the movie it shows that there was like a a big directive from Hitler like a book that told what they were supposed to do with different um, pieces of art and the art plunder that means that the, the the taking of art. So when you plunder, the verb to plunder means to steal. So this is like the art plunder, the art, the stealing of the art. <clears throat> so he was overseeing that. Um, this guy was a Jewish guy from Berlin, a banker. He was also an industrialist. That just means he had business in, in the area of factories. Um, those kind of industries that use factories, that's called an industrialist. And he was a Jewish guy, so of course, because he was Jewish, they probably got rid of him, and I don't know if he died or not, but they took his stuff. So a lot of this was from his collection, and a lot of his collection um, paintings and stuff passed through Munich, which is in Germany, and it was a collecting point. So a point for um, collecting all of the confiscated art. So it just means that the confiscating is is where they uh, to confiscate something means to get it. So if a if a 
if somebody comes to your house, like the police come to your house and they confiscate uh, like all your guns, let's say, they take your guns and they take them back with them. So this is where they took the art that they were taking. So he, he passed through there to see what they had found um, and uh, learn about what kinds of pieces were still because you can imagine even though they recovered a lot of the art they couldn't necessarily find who it belonged to some of the people probably were not even alive anymore because of the war after the war oh, when uh, yes through the Munich collecting <clears throat> point could you uh, could you repeat to yeah. explain it? so I collecting collecting point do you understand that part collecting point so yes yes this point yeah, and do understand. you understand confiscated? It, yes, I understand. Yes. Okay, so that's the point. So Munich is a town, and in Munich they had, a, let's just say, a building, and this is where they collected and put all of the art that they had found, con it that they confiscated. Through collecting point. What does it mean? Passed through collecting it point. It is the artwork, the, uh, the uh, Rubens right here. Sorry. The Rubens, yeah, it. So uh, it is... Passed through collecting point. It, it means it went there, so it stopped there. Ah, just yeah, yeah. To pass through means you go there, you stop there, but you might also continue on. So in this ah. case, this painting, the Rubens painting that we saw, this one right there, it, it, that painting passed through this collection. So it was, it means it was there. So he probably saw it there. I see. Yeah. Uh, direct meaning. It, it's a place. Uh, for for checking on the co uh -huh. con for gathering it, up it all of the confiscate exactly uh, okay right so you can imagine like a big warehouse maybe and there are all these different pieces of art and so he would go there and visit it and see and he probably saw this painting there on one of his visits so one time when he was there he probably saw it and then later decided that he wanted it you know thank you uh huh exactly. Yeah. After the war, when Whitman took the Toledo job, he learned from Metropolitan Museum of Art curator Theodore Rousseau, with whom he had worked at the OSS, that the painting was available. So here we go. It was available. Couple's son, Albert, had recovered the stolen masterpiece and wished to sell it. So Couple, remember, is the guy who owned it um, during the war, before the war. And so his son recovered it, found it again, and he wished to sell it. He wanted to sell it. The Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is called The Met, unsure of its authenticity, turned down the opportunity to buy it. So they didn't want to buy it. Maria? After the war, when Whitman took the Toledo job, he learned from Metropolitan Museum of Art curator Curate, curator, mm -hmm. curator, Theodore Rousseau, with whom he had worked at the OSS, that the painting was available. Coppo's son, Albert, had recovered the stolen masterpiece and wished to sell it. The Met, unsure of its authenticity, turned mm -hmm. down the opportunity to buy it. Mm -hmm. So after the war, so when it's all done, this guy Whitman, who we're talking about, he got this job at Toledo, and then he learned from, so that means he heard about it from the Metropolitan Museum of Art curator, so this guy who he had worked with before told him, hey, this painting, the Rubens painting, is available. It means it's available to buy, is what that means, um, because this guy's son had recovered it, so to recover means to get back, so he, they found it, and he he owned it again, but he wanted or wished to sell it. But the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, the Met, they were unsure. So to, to be unsure means you are not really sure if it's, if it's a real authentic, you know, who really painted it. Because in the art world, especially um, paintings from a long time ago, there are copies. There are fakes. There are frauds. So whenever you're going to pay a lot of money for something, you want to make sure it's actually an authentic piece that was by whoever you know the famous artist is you know so they turned down so to turn down means they said no thank you we don't we don't want to take it we're not gonna buy it so Whitman's connoisseurship 
however, coupled with the knowledge he gained in Europe, gave him confidence to prese proceed with its acquisition. He turned out to be right. Today, the altarpiece is universally accepted as being entirely by Rubens's hand. It's a linchpin in the museum's impressive collection, which is especially strong in 17th century Dutch, French, and Italian painting, as well as 19th century American art. Okay. Pieter? Okay. Uh, Whitman's connoisseurship, however, coupled with the knowledge he gained in Europe, gave him confidence to proceed with acquisition. He turned out to buy. The altarpiece is universally accepted as being entirely by Rubens's hands. It's Lynchpin. Lynchpin. Mm -hmm. uh, Lynchpin. The museum. The museum's impressive collection, which is especially strong in 17th century Dutch. French and Italian painting, as well as 19th century American art. Mm -hmm. So his connoisseurship, to be a connoisseur of something means you're knowledgeable, you know a lot about it. So I'm you sorry, might be, Lisa. Yeah? Uh, I, I don't understand that previous uh, sentence. I'm sorry, very sorry. Which one? Uh, and, uh, after OSS, with the whom he had worked at the OSS, that uh, painting was available. Uh, which sentence? That, uh, it, that sentence. What the painting was available uh, when it, it is connected? Uh, where it, it is connected? That, okay, so that's so the painting. It, what is the meaning? It means, so, we break it up. So after the war, that's the time period, and then they tell you when he was working at his job, he learned from this guy who he had worked with Yes. What he learned was that the painting was available. So this guy, Theodore, told him, hey, you know, this painting, this Rubens painting, do you want to buy it? It's available. So, so the, thanks, to, thanks to him. Uh, yeah. So he, my, yeah. You could say it like this. You could say after the, whoops. You can make a short, simple sentence. After yes. the war, yes. he learned that the painting was available. That would be a oh. simple sentence. Ah, oh. he learned that, that the painting was available. Mm -hmm. So he found out, he found out, he discovered, he heard, he learned, you can say all those different words, but it just means that somebody told him that that painting that he had seen in Munich was available. Available means it was available to purchase, to buy. Ah, two purchase. Okay. Yes. The painting yeah. was for sale. The painting was for sale. Exactly. To the highest bidder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, didn't understand. To buy. Okay. Exactly. Okay. It okay. was available. Sorry. To be available means you can buy yes. it. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. If something's not available, it means it's not for sale. Exactly. Thank okay, you. so to be a connoisseur means you know something. You could be a connoisseur of wine, a connoisseur of, you know, specialty foods, anything. Uh, so he was a connoisseur of art, obviously. So this coupled with, so along with, to couple means to put two things together, like a couple, like, you know, you put two things together. So he had his connoisseurship and knowledge that he gained, so that he got, he received in Europe. And this, um, this knowledge and this connoisseurship that he had about art in general um, gave him confidence. So he had confidence that he could proceed, that means to go forward with the acquisition. So he, was, he felt confident that he could purchase it. To acquire something means to purchase, and that's what the noun here, acquisition, means. The acquisition of the painting, so the buying of the painting, the acquiring of the painting. And he turned out to be right. So it means it, it, was, it is right. He was right. It is truly an authentic Rubens piece, and it's called the linchpin. So a linchpin means something that's very significant, important, or critical. So it's a very important piece that makes up the museum's impressive collection. So without it, maybe the collection wouldn't um, be so impressive. But with it, it's like a very important piece 
in that collection. Just like having like a Picasso would be really important if you were, you know, in a more mo modern uh, museum. If you wanted a collection with modern pieces, you might, you know, want certain artists. So for this collection with, you know, these uh, Dutch, French, and Italian paintings, it's important for that collection. The mystic marriage of St. Catherine is one of countless paintings and sculptures that found their way into American museum collections for a generation starting in the late 1940s. Thanks to information gained and relationships forged by curators and directors who had been engaged in the restitution of Nazi looted art. Okay, Vincenzo. Hi, Nero. You're back. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> <Me so. laughs> I did it. Yeah. Okay, Vincenzo, go ahead. Okay, The Mystic Marriage of St. Catherine is one of countless paintings and sculptures that found their way into American museum collection for a generation starting in the late 1940s thanks to information gained and relationships formed by curators and directors who had been engaged in the restitution of Nancy Luther de Havre. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I think you guys understand that countless, so when you say countless, it was, I mean, it's amazing when you watch the movie, I think it said something like five million pieces of art or something crazy like that. So that's how much they recovered. So countless paintings and sculptures, so it wasn't just the paintings, it was all different types of art. Um, so all of these, or some of these, or a lot of them, countless, they made their way or they found their way into. That means they became uh, parts of museum collections. So American museums bought them and so they put them into their collection. So the paintings and sculptures found their way into. It's kind of a funny way to say it, but it means it, they got there. So they became part of a, um, American museum collections. And this was yeah. thanks to um, information gained, so information that they got about you know what are the important pieces in European art um, and from that time, those time periods, and also the relationships that were forged. To forge a relationship means to to make a relationship, to become friends with. So these relationships, while they were working during the war, um, were created or forged uh, between the curators and the directors that had been engaged in. So that that means who were working on. So if you're engaged in something, it means you're working on this project. And the project they were working on was the restitution. Restitution means like getting it back to the owners. When you give restitution, it's like you um, you make amends, kind of. It's uh, so they were taking all, they were finding the art and then trying to give it back to where who owned it, the the churches, the people, the museums, that kind of stuff. After Whitman's 1976 retirement from Toledo, he moved to Southern California and became a trustee at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and the J. Paul Getty Museum. His papers are today housed at the Getty Research Institute in Brentwood, that's in uh, California. I haven't perused them, but if the Rubens coup is any guide, I suspect they contain surprises. Okay, Yuki. After Whitman's 1976 re retirement from Toledo, Toledo, he moved to Southern California and became a trustee at, at the Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, County Museum of Art and the J. Paul Getty Museum. His papers are today housed at the, at, at the Getty Research Institute in Bretton. Bretwood. I hadn't pursued. Perused. Uh, I hadn't perused them, mm -hmm. but if the Rubens who Rubens who is a, any guide, any guide, I suspect them. I I suspect they con contain surprises. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he tie he retired. That means he's not no longer working. Um, he became a trustee, so a trustee means you belong to like the board of directors or something of a museum 
or an organization. His papers, so his notes and things that he uh, wrote about, you know, during his time period there, are housed. That means that's where they live. That's where they're stored. And this guy who wrote the article he says he hasn't perused. To peruse means to look through them. So you can peruse a book. Like if you go to a bookstore and you just want to look, I mean, you want to look through a bunch of different books, you can say, I'm just perusing. It's a way of saying you're, you're not really reading it from, you know, the whole book. You're just kind of looking through it to see if something is interesting to you. To skim um, through. Yeah, it. to kind of skim. A little bit more than skim. Okay, yeah. okay. Peruse. Yeah, but similar idea. Yeah. Um, if the Rubens coup is any guide. So basically he's saying if... If the idea that he got this Rubens, the, the coup is re referring to that was a good move. Like it was a good move on his part to get this um, masterpiece. So if, if that is like an example of what, how he worked, then this author suspects, he imagines, that he might find some surprises. He might find some other pieces of art that were just as good that this guy Whitman found. So that's kind of what it means, you know. Maybe that he found other pieces from this same time period, the World War II uh, time period. So, what do you guys? Oh, uh, could you repeat again? I missed. Yes. I missed. Uh, if the Ruben coup is any guide, what does it mean? Okay, a coup is like okay. So usually you think of coup d'état. That's a French thing, like yes. when somebody overtakes a government. But in this case, the word coup, it's like it was a stroke of genius. Like it was a, in a, a cool thing that he did. So it was something not usual. So he he got the piece. You know what I'm saying? That was like an amazing thing that he got a masterpiece for this. Um, you know, Toledo, Ohio is not a big town. <laughs> That's kind of what it means. It's not like the metropolitan. It would have been more normal or usual or typical for the museum in New York, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, to get an important piece. But since he got it for this smaller museum, it was a coup. It means like a, a brilliant um, movement or a brilliant act. And so if this is any guide, so guide here means more like an example. If this is an example of how this guy worked or what he knew about art and what he acquired, then I suspect they contain. So they is referring to his papers. So he's saying that if this uh, is an example... How to say another word, if the Rubens coup is any guide? Yeah, so if him getting the Rubens painting is an example of what he was able to do, then there are probably some other important surprises in those papers, is what it means. So if I were to read through the papers, I might discover some other types of um, pieces of artwork that he was able to acquire that were important. The coup is that he was able to get this masterpiece for this small museum. Does that make sense? Who is he? The Rubens? Whitman. This guy. Whitman? He was the guy that purchased... I don't understand. Purchased. Okay. Whitman's the guy we were talking about up here. You will have to watch the movie to understand. <laughs> well, the movie doesn't talk about Whitman. The movie... Okay. Yeah, this is just the the aftermath. So he's saying like, so here's the. Let me just. I want to show you guys some pictures from the movie real quick. So the movie, like these are the real guys, you know, and these are the, these are the actors. <laughs> so they went in, and these are more handsome guys. Yeah, more handsome, <laughs> more famous guys there. The, what they were doing is they found all these pieces of art that were like um, hidden away in mine shafts in Germany. And they were looking for them, and when they started to find them, then they were able to give them back to uh, people who were really the owners of them, or the museums where they were before the war. But sometimes the Americans, like this guy Whitman, so this article is talking specifically about one museum in Toledo, Ohio, and this guy Whitman, who was the director of it, a curator, he was able to get this piece and that was amazing because this is a real masterpiece it's beautiful <clears throat> yeah and think of it it's just life size it's not like a little painting it's a huge thing but life so. size the the people <clears throat> on the picture or, or uh, 
Yeah. Are they real size? Yeah. I mean, full mm -hmm. size. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Did you means. like the movie? I you liked it. Uh -huh. A yeah. short review. Yeah, <laughs> I liked, like I said, I liked the movie because, um, I mean, I like watching George Clooney. <laughs> and right. I thought the, the other actors, they did a good job. And I liked it because, um, you know, a lot of times uh, World War II movies can be very sad and depressing. And there are some parts of it that, you know, you've certainly reminded you of how horrible this time period was for people and the destruction that happened to so many towns. Um, but on the other hand, it was very interesting. <clears throat> and um, I thought it was quite amazing that there were people who cared. Because in part of the movie, that was kind of the thing. Like, why are we so worried about art? We need to stop the war and we need to, like, save uh, people's lives. But these people they, were specifically caring about the art. It was during the war. It was during the end of the war. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, 1940. Yeah. Did you teach her? You like George Clooney? I like George Clooney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Sudan. I think he was in Sudan. Yeah, he's a he does a lot of uh, spoke up about human rights. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was it's it, it was interesting because it's not anything that you ever hear of. Like I never heard that the Nazis or that Hitler was trying to like get all of the art and take it. I mean that's that that would have been a major thing had he been able to destroy all this art. That would have been So what the intention amazing. to what's the intention to destroy the art? To burn um, it or something or just get hold of it. It was to get hold of it first and then it was to build a huge museum in Austria. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. But mm -hmm. according to the movie, um, when the Germans were losing, then he started directing them to destroy it. So now, then they started to destroy it. Like it's a, it's like mm. if if I'm not gonna have it, you're not gonna have it either. You know. Oh, horrible. Kind of yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's like you know a lot of human history and the art. You know, is something specific. You know, it's not just like a building that can be rebuilt. It's like a Michelangelo that will never be made again. You know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a good movie. Yeah. It's worth watching. Okay, yeah, I want to see it. it just, how do you say, premiered here Premier? yesterday? Oh, premiered. okay. Yeah, yesterday. premiered. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, what are you saying, Peter? They did actually just visit the island of... And, and what happened in the movie, anyways, is that, yeah, I think some of the um, stuff still stayed in Germany, and then the Russians were coming. So as the war was ending, the United States was leaving parts of Europe, and the Russians were coming in, and they were taking stuff away too, so they were oh, taking and stuff back was to Russia. Into, yeah. you know, Western and Eastern Berlin. Exactly. And on uh, uh, the island, there are five museums. Okay. You can see many of these pieces there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. Different countries have different pieces of art that were it, before that they were in the countries where they were made. Maybe you know. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Well, maybe you'll see the movie either in theaters or on the DVD or somehow else. <laughs> yeah. uh, how people know. Okay. Thanks for coming to class. I have two classes Thank tomorrow. Uh, they're kind of early morning classes for me, so not so late for some of you guys. So um, maybe I'll see you there. If not, uh, have mm -hmm. a good weekend. Oh, same to you, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Artworks during and after World War II is impressive. Okay. Aida, why don't we start with you? You can read for us. The greatest you no, from the title? Uh, the monument. Ahead. Yeah, whatever. Start from the title skin. <laughs> the monuments men did more than rescue Nazi loaded art. The greatest Arabians Altarpiece in America is in Ohio at the Toledo Museum of Art. We have the monument, monument, right? Monument. Monument. Mm -hmm. Monument. Men mm -hmm. to thank for that. George Clooney's glamping author movie, The Monument Men. I'm sorry, the screen disappeared. We need to get. 
Okay, the monument man did not impress the critics. Inert lamented LA Times movie critic Ken Torian, but the real life story of soldiers sent to protect and rescue Europe's great artworks during and after World War II is impressive. Mm -hmm. Good. So let me make sure you guys all know what monuments. It's kind of this was their code name, like the group, you know. So in wartime, I guess different bands of soldiers or whatever they get, they give themselves uh, secret codes or names or things. So these guys were called the monuments men, and a monument is like a piece of art. You know, it's like it's usually like a building, maybe. Um, but it's a piece of art and it's something to remember. So that kind of represented what they were trying to do. They were trying to rescue the various monuments or pieces of art or protect different... Uh, a lot of the art was in uh, churches, for example, around uh, different cities in France and um, Italy and other places they were trying to save. Um, so that's why it's called the Monuments Men. All right, so the altar piece. This is an altar piece. So an altar is usually in a church. So the altar is where you go to worship. It's usually the piece like that's behind where the priest or something, you know, like in a Catholic church, the priest is talking. Uh, the altar piece is that piece. And here's the piece that they're Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa, and I want to welcome you to this hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. Um, this is going to be a reading class, so if you are interested in practicing your reading out loud and also learning some new vocabulary, some new grammatical structures, things like that, um, then please join me. If you have a reservation for this class, you can use your reservation in the first uh, two minutes of each class. If you don't come during that time, then the regular join class button will be available to everybody. So if you are a Verbling.com member and you haven't made a reservation but you want to join a class, you just come to class and see if it's not full. You know, full means nine students plus the teacher. Um, if it's not full, then you can always join at any time. Um, hi guys. Hi there, Yuki. Welcome to class. Hi, hi Yuki. Hi. Yeah, good to see you. Hi, Vincenzo. How are you? Hi, teacher. How are you? Hi. Good. I'm good. Thank you. Hi, Peter. Yeah. Hello. Good. How are, How are you? you? Fine. Thanks. Okay. Wonderful. And uh, Maria, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not so busy this weekend? Uh, actually, I've been pretty relaxed this weekend. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Does Sweden celebrate Valentine's Day? Uh, not that much. No. Uh, yeah, 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 well, of course we do. But On the same I always day? I can imagine it's bigger in the United States. I don't know why, but we call it um, Kära Hjärtans Dag. <laughs> really? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I can write it down for you, <laughs> but it's pretty hard to... to what, is it, what does it mean? Does it mean... Uh, it means... Uh, uh, um, I don't know, Dear Hearts Day or something like that. Oh, okay. Hearts you know, hearts, mm, precious hearts, something like precious, that. Precious, precious hearts day. Yeah, that's fun. I haven't seen any of the Olympics. Uh, I don't have a TV. Yeah, I don't have a TV. At my, well, I do have a TV at my house, but I don't have like cable TV. I just have Apple TV, and so I can watch movies and stuff on it. But um, I would have to go to this other house <laughs> to go watch uh, the Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, I see. It's very strange than in my country. In my country, if I have TV, yeah. I can pick a channel. But here, I have to get that a cable, cable to watch TV. You have whatever to pay. the channel is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's very strange. Yeah. 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 It's strange. When I was a kid growing up, we just had a TV, and you just turn it on, and then there's channels. Only maybe four or five, 
but nowadays, if you have a TV and you turn it on, you have to have some kind of hookup to a cable or a satellite or something to get TV. Yeah, so. lot, lot of yeah it's different. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, did you see you got the link? So this, let me explain a little bit what we're going to read so you have a little bit of a background. Um, I actually went and saw this movie the other day. It's the new movie with George Clooney, um, who's a popular American actor uh, who Nihon loves, but she's not here today. <laughs> Maybe she's going out with her boyfriend. <laughs> we'll have to mm -hmm. ask her. Um, <clears throat> so the movie is kind of an interesting story. It was based on a true story, actually, and it's a simple story, really. It was um, just about the fact that, uh, as you can see here in the title, it talks about Nazi looted art. So to loot means to steal. So I guess what was happening was during World War II, uh, Hitler decided that he was going to um, take all of the works of art out of Europe, the different cities in Europe that he was trying to conquer, and he was looting the art. So he was taking, stealing the art, and he was um, going to create some type of Führer, you know, like leader or something, museum, where he would put it all in there, and, and like he would be the owner of all of this, um, art, you know, all this artwork from the the past, you know, years and years, hundreds of years before, you know, Europe obviously has a very rich history of art in different time periods and different ways of doing art, sculptures, all that, you know, Impressionism, all these different movements in art. And so what happened was uh, some American guy realized what was happening and told the president of the United States at the time, uh, Roosevelt, that they needed to go and save the art. And it was kind of an interesting thing because most people were not thinking about saving art. They were thinking about saving people's lives uh, because they were trying to stop the war um, from happening and pe you know, people were being devastated, their towns were being destroyed, and so people were not thinking about art so much, but this, some people were, of course. Um, and so they got together this group of guys who, that was their mission. So different people from the United States, France, and England, I think, who knew about art, so they knew what to look for, they went and tried to um, find out where the art was and get it back. So that was like their mission and the, and the story of the movie is that story. So George Clooney along with somebody else uh, wrote the movie and then of course starred in it and directed it. So that's what the movie is about and it's pretty good. It doesn't get the highest ratings like on IMDB but I thought it was a good something fun to watch and interesting piece of World War II history that I didn't know about and um, so it's another part of that time period. Okay, so we'll start reading. The Monuments Men Did More Than Rescue Nazi Looted Art. So this is from Christopher Knight, who is the Los Angeles Times art critic. The greatest Rubens altarpiece in America is in Ohio at the Toledo Museum of Art. We have the Monuments Men to thank for that. George Clooney's glumphing all-star movie, The Monuments Men, did not impress the critics. Inert, lamented LA Times movie critic Kenneth Turan. But the real-life story of soldiers sent to protect and rescue Europe's great... I like that. Uh, something I, I can't <laughs> translate it, but it's not, it's, it's not called Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Precious Hearts Day. I like that. Or... Uh, all Hearts Day or something. All Hearts Day? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but is it on the same day? Like, because it was yesterday here. For yeah, it was 14th. Okay. So it was uh, yesterday here as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's Saturday. Right, yeah. you're Saturday night right now. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's confusing. It is sometimes. I know, I know. Especially uh, sometimes I work with, like, private students who are, like, in Romania or something, and it's... 
I have to work at night because it's early morning, so I always have to remember what day are we talking about because it's two yeah. different days then. <laughs> Not the same yeah. day. <laughs> oh, thank you, Norel. <laughs> My crazy hair. My crazy hair. They look very cute. Thank you. Well, I, have, I have this skylight back there. You can see the, the lights coming, coming behind me. My hair is a very interesting kind of hair because it's... Uh, Curly. Cur it's curly, but, it, love, yes. but it's frizzy also. So it's not something you can comb. It's like sheep's hair, you know? <laughs> it's like wool. Sheep. Oh, they are sheep. so beautiful. <laughs> so, I sometimes. Curls sometimes. When I was little. I oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Your hair straight? And my hair is pretty straight, yeah. Not, and I wanted straight <laughs> hair. <laughs> yeah. it, seems, it seems so much easier. And you can curl it. You can curl it if you want yeah, to. Yeah, of course. I, yeah, but you can straighten it. <laughs> yeah, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work to curl hair, too. <laughs> yes. Guys don't have to worry about it. Vincenzo, you don't have to worry about it too much. <laughs> All this hair. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Guys have it easy. Guys have it easy That's sometimes. Hair. Yeah, just you know, get a buzz cut or something, and you're good. <laughs> okay. Hi, Ida. How are you doing? Hey, Ida, did you did your kids go see the Lego Movie yet? <laughs> <laughs> right now, they are interested to watch the Olympics. Oh, the Olympics! Oh, fun. Yeah. Nice. 